God bless you, Facebook and YouTube. This is Robert Jenkins. It is a Wednesday afternoon, 5.30 on time. God bless everybody. How is everybody doing? As always, me and my wife take out the time to say thank you. We appreciate all those who come on and those for the first time. Welcome to Divine Insight Ministries. And we, God bless you, we just welcome you into um, this ministry. Uh, it's a very revelatory ministry, and we just believe in giving it raw and giving it real. So we just thank God for all that he's doing. As always, we ask you to share this on your page. Please hit that share button, share this on your page, and then we ask you to invite people out. Let them know that there's a word from the Lord five days out of a week, Monday through Friday. So just let them know that God bless everybody uh, that is here, and we just appreciate all that you do. We want to talk about something. We've been doing so much. We've been so busy good to see you mark um last week we just dealt with so much with the function of love i'm hoping that you have went already to amazon to um google play and the other one is itunes and and purchase that um single out called the function of love it'll be a blessing to you i hope you have did that and please you know you can purchase one for someone else and tell people about it that you can find that cd and there's many more to come also we did a lot of teaching last week we did some open i guess we can call it open mic on fridays we talked about the church and the purpose of the church and we did a part one and part two we thank all the guests who was able to come on pastor jeff uh dave felder and also gilbert rucker so we just thank god for all those and it's just been a blessing i'm back we did a teaching yesterday i hope you get a chance to go and listen to that i did post it on my page and james summers posted on his page as well and um basically with the ministry called Alliance Roar, and I'll be on next Tuesday as well. If you didn't get a chance to be with me this Tuesday, next Tuesday conference call, uh, we're doing that as well. And uh, look very soon for us to do a conference call just for men. I'm going to start our prayer for men. We're going to begin to pray on a conference call and just begin to have some conversations and begin to intercede for one another. So a lot been going on, a lot of teaching. I've been coming, home, coming on in different hours. So it's good to be back at 530. I know a lot of people miss me and say we're waiting on you to teach again. So we thank God for that. And uh, it was just a blessing for me to be able to release that single and also just to have some questions. I told you one of the things that I wish I could do more. I wish I could come to your city and really get a chance to see you and uh, and get a chance to be uh, to give an impartation to you. But uh, we'll we'll make do for what we have right now and just have different people come on and talk. So that's a blessing. Love everybody. God bless you, me and my wife. We appreciate you as always. Keep us in your prayer and remember to hit that share button. Hit that share button and also tell people there's a word from the Lord. I want to talk about something that's been on my heart. Uh, it's going to kind of tie into what I've been talking about, and it's basically stand with God. Uh, I, I do want to give you a lot of things today, so we'll see what the Lord has to say. <laughs> yes, Trina, I understand. Many of us are spoiled, and I understand that. Father, we bless your name for what you're doing. We thank you for your anointing. God, we thank you because you love us so much. God, you've been so good to us, and we can look back over our lives and see that you have never left us to ourselves. We thank you. Lord, as we embark upon the understanding of your word, as we begin to teach your people, we decrease that you may increase in our lives. Holy Spirit, we don't teach without you. You are the teacher. We are the student. Teach us. Teach us. Lead us and guide us into all truth. We ask angels to be assigned to our mind, north, east, south, and west. Guard us from any distractions. Allow this word to fall on good ground. We trust you with everything that you say. God, we trust you with the world. We know that you are still in control. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. If we have done anything, said anything that has offended you, Lord, forgive us in the name of Jesus. God, we always repent on a daily basis for any type of thought process that was not lining up with you. Forgive us for that in the wonderful name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for the eyes that you're going to open, the hearts that you're going to change, and the souls that you're going to save. We thank you for the bodies that are going to be healed. God, we trust in your presence that it will bring about liberation for your people and will bring about purpose and vision. And all these things we thank you and we ask you in the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I have a lot that I want to teach you today, and, and I do want to be honest with you. Today will be a very, 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 and let me say that, and I hope that you hear this in the spirit, a very, very heavy lesson. This is really a, a, a serious lesson, and it's for people who are very mature and understand the Word of God. 
As always, I try to break it down so that the baby can understand it. Good to see you, son. Good to see everybody. Good to see you, Pam. Uh, so, so I want you to take notes today. I want you to pay attention. If you have some other things going on and you have the privilege to be able to isolate yourself, please do that because the day is going to require some serious focus to be able to understand the magnitude in which I am teaching today. I'm dealing with staying in God, and let me tell you what my heart is. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be more transparent in. If anybody knows me, I try to be as transparent as possible. Uh, I believe that there's a great deception going on in the world. I believe that people are being moved away from God or the, or the light is shining on people to reveal they have never been with God. There are a set of people who believe they are with God, but they're not. There are a set of people who are, God, I feel the anointing. There's a people who, are, who have the lip service of God, but their hearts are not truly there. And we say their hearts are not there because the level of their obedience based upon their love for God is not being expressed. You can say many things. He says, many has called me Lord, Lord, but you do not do the things that I say. So many people think they're with God because they have a God language or they have a God, uh, a, a God idea or they have God expressions, but their behavior according to what God is requiring from them is not meeting the standards. And this is going on. So you can be deceived by people who talk religion, who talk spirituality, who seems to listen to spirituality, may even be faithful to church, but it's not faithful to the whisper that God is whispering in their ears. They are faithful to the moments in God when God calls them. They do the big things but miss the small things. Okay? And it's the small foxes that destroy the, the vine. So we have to understand these things and begin to be honest. These things, if you are uh, a, a person who, 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 who lays your head on the heart of God, you feel these things. I am not happy and you should have been able to hear that through my last couple of teachings with the uh, expression of the church. I'm not happy with the status of the church. Uh, when I go to church, I, I see more disappointment. Now, there are some great things sometimes that come from church, but it is mixed with so much poison. It is devastating to see that so many people are not getting the medicine that they need, that they need from church. It is devastating to see the lack of accountability that leaders are taking and the lack of integrity and the lack of commitment and loyalty to study, to pray, to be in God's face, to care for God's people. It is an indictment against the word of God. But even in all of that, I must be faithful to what God has called me to do and I can't let what I see cause me to abort what I know and what is, is called for me. Because at the end of the day, God is not going to call me in a room with a crowd. It's going to be me and God and I want to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. But this is my burden and this makes me pray more. I pray so much all day long, you know, and, and even God is calling me. My wife was telling me today, there's a greater level of prayer that even God is calling me. And Lord, knows that 90% of the time, what's on my mind is God and his people. 90% of the time. And I'm not bragging. I'm not trying to say that I'm so much there. But really, God can read my heart and read my mind. My mind is so much on God's people because I see the falling away. I see the exposure. I see the, the hypocrisy. I see the drifting. And it is devastating when you really love God's people and you really love God to watch it be like that. So this is the reason uh, why I think I'm being burdened and it's pushing me into prayer. It's pushing me to hiding. It's pushing me to a greater level of study. I'm having more conversations about it because I, I, I feel like God, God said he wished that no man should perish. I wish that no man would perish. It's devastating to see the marital problems that is going on, uh, church problems that is going on. The education system is falling uh, at a greater level than ever before. The young people don't even have an understanding of God or nor an interest to understand God at the level that it should be. The, 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 the frequency or the weight of God's glory that should be on the next generation is not even prepared to deal with the demons of 20 years ago. There are demons and, and, and principalities 30 years old that were, that were almost beat to death the average Christian nowadays. We're not prepared to deal with these warlocks. We're not even prepared to deal 
with with philosophy that is wrong, uh, 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 different uh, doctrines that are off. We can't even seem to handle, as I used to always say, demons on life support are killing us. And it's a shame to say that because we haven't pushed more into the anointing. We haven't pushed more into the presence. We are so busy living our lives and trying to make money and trying to be famous and trying to look nice that we're not concerned about our soul. We may think about our soul, and I say may, we may think about our souls on a Sunday morning. Maybe, maybe, but most of the time Sunday mornings has nothing to do with our soul, but most times Sunday mornings has everything to do with religion and with church and with I have to preach or I have to teach or I have to play the organ or I have to trustee or all those different things, but not really about my intimacy with God. This is a tragedy. It is, it's crazy. It's, a, it's, 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 it's ludicrous, but this is the reality. So if ever before we need real people who really love God, who's going to get on their face, who's going to travail, who's going to pull down strongholds, who's going to intercede for the next generation, who's going to begin to evangelize. We don't even evangelize. We don't even hear no one talking about the power of God and that you must be saved and salvation and things like that. We don't even see people overwhelmed about the presence of God. Very rare do we do it. And now those people People who have do it, they have been almost bought by the devil. That we want to commercialize our testimony, we want to make money off of our gift, we want to profit. So there's a compromising even when it comes to that. And I'm telling you, this is why I've been pregnant with this particular message: staying in God. And I'm going to give some teaching today. Uh, give me a little time. Uh, I'm going to give some teaching today about staying in God, okay? Now, you must understand, and, and it, you got to listen to me today because I'm going to say a lot of things that are heavy and very powerful. So listen to me, and I'm going to try to slow down. You know I talk fast, but I'm going to try to slow down and show you something. But if you don't understand God the Father, you will never understand God the Son. If you don't understand God the Son, you will never understand God the Holy Spirit. You will never understand, and we know the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but you will never understand the threefold of God. You will never understand God the Father and the Sonship and the power of Jesus and why he's Jesus, nor understand the mind of Christ that is attached to Jesus, nor will you understand the Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us into truth. These three must agree. These three are one, and we must understand that. And I'm going to show you the three in one, and I'm going to show you the seven in one. So to understand God. Now, you have to be able to understand God and stay in God. Now, understanding God puts you into place to understand Jesus. Jesus. And understanding Jesus puts you in place to understand the Holy Spirit. We're not understanding these three. So we are living, God, I feel the anointing. We're living in a time and in a dispensation. I'm going to talk about the seven dispensations. We're living in a dispensation now who do, does not lean on the anointing, does not lean on the Holy Spirit, do not lean on this paraclete that has been given us to lead and guide us into all truth. We should walk in the Spirit as He is in the Spirit. We don't know how to walk in the Spirit or walk after the Spirit or be led by the Spirit because we don't really have a true understanding of the Spirit. And the reason why we don't have a true understanding of the Holy Spirit because we don't have a true understanding of Jesus. And the real reason why we don't have a true understanding of Jesus and it's so easy for the Messiah to be attacked and his name to be attacked and his nature to be attacked because we don't understand God. If you don't understand God from the Old Testament, you would never understand God the Son in the New Testament. And if you don't understand God the Son in the New Testament, you will never understand the Holy Ghost that is no longer upon you, but in you, and should lead and guide you. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Which means you will remain carnal, you will, will, will remain immature, and you won't, and I even say this, you won't even be able to remain without a true understanding of God and His love and His government and His plan and His vision. You will not remain. There are systems of the devil that will pull you out because you don't have a root in God. The Bible says, and we learned this as a child, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It says, for God so loved the world. So it was the love of the father that released the love of the son. Jesus came to show us the love of the father. For God so loved the world that he gave
gave to his son. His son is a byproduct. And, G and God wrapped himself up into flesh and came down as man, but he had all humanity at the same time had divinity. It's the first time that anybody could claim to have God in human skin. And this is why the deity of Jesus is always being attacked and always being misunderstood because we don't want to understand that God that we know of the Old Testament, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was literally wrapped up in a flesh that we gave the name Jesus. And we must understand that Christ was not his last name. Christ was his assignment or his anointing. He is Jesus, the anointed one, the Messiah. He had been prophesied from the Old Testament. So we must understand a relationship with God. So in the beginning, God created us and we were created in the image and the likeness of God. But we must understand that. And that was breathed into a man by the first name of Adam. Well, Adam fell. And then the last Adam came, which is Jesus Christ. He comes as the last Adam to redeem us back to understand who we are. And why? what did God say to us when he said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish? So our understanding of God. So I'm trying to stay in the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost helps me bring everything to my remembrance about Jesus and what Jesus says. And I'm staying in Christ or in Christ Jesus because Christ Jesus gave us everything that his father said. So if I understand the Holy Ghost, I will understand Jesus. And when I understand Jesus, I understand God the Father. I'm going to give you some heavy teaching today. We're going to walk with some things. I'm coming from uh, Luke chapter 15 when it says, I am the vine and my father is the husband man. He goes on to say, if you abide in me and I abide in you, you can do all these things. If you don't bear fruit, I'm going to cut you off. And then he goes to say that without me, you can do nothing. But he starts out by saying, I am the vine and my father is the husband man. Okay, that is where I'm coming from today. Now, we must understand when he uses the word I am. I am the vine. We must understand who's the I and who's the am, who is the I am of God, and understand the spirit of God to know how to dwell in God and how to stay in God. You're not staying in some logos just called God. You're not staying in a three-letter word. You are staying in a presence. And I'm going to show you that there are seven spirits or seven mindsets that make up the one mind of God. And when you understand God, you understand these seven mindsets. So I'm going to teach some very heavy, uh, deep things today. I'm going to try to break it down as small as I can, but I want you to understand that you must stay in God. You cannot allow money, nor people, nor your mother, nor your father, nor your gifting, nor your purpose, nor your vision to pull you out of God. You have to love God more than your calling. You got to more love God more than your gift. You have to love God more than your assignment. You have to love God more than purpose and vision because those things can be negotiated with or duplicated. But when you love God, you will forsake all for God. And when you cannot sing and cannot preach and cannot make any more money and your marriage may be over or you're old and gray, you'll still be growing in God because you started with a love for God. I don't love God because he gave me a gift or because I can teach. I love Love God because I understand that he first loved me and without understanding who he is, I'll never be able to feel my original purpose on earth or have intimacy with my father. I don't know about you, but I want to live forever in his presence and forever in his presence. There will, there will come a time in my life where I will no longer do any more preaching. I will no longer do any more teaching. I will no longer play the drums. I will no longer play the piano and I have an eternal place with God the father. I need to prepare myself. If I'm going to spend more eternal time with the Father than I ever was spent in church, in marriage, in my home, with money. What I do on earth is so small and so temporary, I dare not focus all the time on earth and miss my eternity with God and spend eternity with the devil because I focus more on the carnal and earth things and not my intimacy with my daddy, with the lover of my soul. And that's what it's all about. Okay, get your Bibles and let's walk. I am the vine, 
My father is the husband man. He's claiming that there is an entity in which I come from. We must understand the I am's. There are seven I am's in the Bible. Seven that Jesus talks about. I may, I may walk you through them today, but I probably won't get to all, I seven. But you should know some, like I am the door. I am the light of the world. I am the salt of the earth. You, you should deal with the seven I am's. I am, I am the bread, and I'm going to deal with all the things that God says I am. So when he says I am the vine, he are saying you're coming from these seven I am's, okay? There are seven mindsets, and when you talk to God, you're talking to these seven mindsets mindsets, you're being intimate with these seven mindsets, so you deal with the seven I am's, okay? Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 27. Verse 26 says, let us make man in our image, and it uses the word our. Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. But verse 27 seems to cancel out verse 26. Verse, verse 26 says, let us, it uses the plural word us. And don't be surprised about God being in plural form because the word Elohim, in the beginning God, that word God in the Hebrew is the word Elohim. It is the plural form of God. So when he said, let us make man, some people teach it as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. I don't absolutely go uh, all the way towards that doctrine, but I'm going to tell you who I think that us is representing, okay? So we, we understand it, but let us make man in our image and in our likeness. But verse 27 seems to change the language. So God made man in his own image. Own. Now many people say we're made in, 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 we're made in God's, uh, or let us, but us is not concluded in verse 27. In verse 27, it seems like he started out by saying let us, but he ended up saying so God made man in his own. Now we know that us in his own is one. That when you see the Father, you have seen the Son. And when you have seen the Son, you have seen the Father. And we understand that we can show so many symbolics of the Trinity being one. We can show you God the Father saying this is my beloved Son. We can see the dove symbolic of the Holy Spirit and Jesus is being baptized. We can see so many things that even when Peter said thou art the Christ, he says flesh and blood has not revealed it, but my Father which is in heaven. No man can come unto the Father and come unto the Son unless the Father draw him. So you can't come unto Jesus unless the Father draw you, but no man can know me unless he know me by the Spirit. But you can't know him unless you have the Spirit. So all three of those work together to bring the clarity of who Christ is, okay? I'm talking fast, but I want you to understand this. Every time I, I, I try to walk heavy, my computer goes crazy. So I'm dealing with the vine, and I'm trying to give you understanding. When he says, I am the vine, he's talking about the seven I am's. And the seven I am's is a representation of God. The seven I am's is represent of God. So when you talk about God, you talk about the door, you talk about the candlesticks, you talk about bread, because he is the seven I am's. And when God created you, he created you from the seven I am's, okay? So so God created man in his own image, okay? Now watch this. If you go to Isaiah, now I'm, I'm walking in the Bible, we got to start walking in the Word. If you go to Isaiah chapter 11, and I'm going to turn there because I want you to, I want to read with you. In Isaiah... Chapter 11 gives us clarity on Luke chapter 15. Isaiah chapter 11 says this, And there shall come forth, this is the prophet, a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. It's referring to the vine. We know we understand vines and how vine grows. They have to have roots and they have to have branches. So he's symbolic. He says we come out of. Now watch this. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. Jesus come out of the stem of Jesse. And there shall be a branch to grow out of his roots. Now watch this. The next verse is going to talk about the seven spirits of God. Or the seven mindsets of God. Or the seven ingredients. God, all through the Bible you'll see this. You'll see for the fruit of the spirit. It is. It don't say for the fruits S. It says for the fruit, one fruit of the Spirit is, not are, and then it would name love, joy, peace. Or is there nine fruits? No. There are nine ingredients or nine mindsets or nine expressions from the one fruit. Very key. There are nine gifts of the Spirit, but it all comes from the same Spirit. So when you understand God, you must understand the multiplication out of one. When you look at an apple seed, do you see one tree or do you see an apple seed? You see one seed, but inside the one seed is how many trees? No one can give us the number 
of how many trees is in one seed because one seed give you one tree but every tree give you 300 to 500 fruit and every fruit has two to three seeds in the apple so in the one seed was the one tree with 300 apples with at least two seeds in each apple so really you don't have a tree you have a forest of trees in the one seed by one man we all was created God only needs one because the potential of one is an unlimited number so when you understand God you must understand the unlimited expressions of God so when I'm staying in God I'm not just staying in God I am standing in who God represents all the mindsets of God all the expressions of God so the enemy trying to pull me out of God because even though if I stay in God I'll stay in love I'll stay in joy I'll stay in peace I'll stay in long suffering I'll stay in protection I'll stay in bread I'll stay in water I'll stay in all these things because all these things are in God Woo! See, so you have to understand, I'm staying in God because everything I need is in God. So if I get God, I get a wife, I get a house, I get empowerment, I get love, I get I get uh, my mind, I get courage, I get water, I get all these things are in the one. So we must understand, so staying in God is really staying in everything that I need. Everything has been designed for me because the because the, the potential of it is unlimited. Let's go back to Isaiah. Man, I'm getting excited. Okay, verse 2. I'm the spirit of the Lord. The first mindset of God is the mindset of who he is. So when you understand God, you understand Jesus. You can never understand Jesus without understanding God because it is God because he wrapped yourself up in the flesh. And when you understand Jesus, you understand the Holy Ghost because he is the Holy Ghost because he's one. Uh-oh, and these three are one. And they don't have to agree in one. They are one. When you understand, So when you see me, you have seen the Father. So when you see God of the Old Testament, you also see Jesus of the New Testament. The difference between Jesus and the New Testament is that he's God wrapped up in flesh. Oh, so when you stand in God, you stand in Jesus and you stand in the Holy Ghost because all of these is really one. And when you've seen one, you have seen everything. Watch this. Now, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. God bless everybody. Good to see you, Pastor Kent. Will explain the seven mindsets of the one God. He said the first mindset is out of the stem of Jesse. Watch this. Out of the branches shall grow roots and the spirit of the Lord. One shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom. Two, and understanding. Three, the spirit of counsel. Four, the spirit of might. Five, the spirit of knowledge. Six, and the fear of the Lord. Seven. This is seven mindsets of the one God. So really when he said, let us make man, he wasn't talking about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. When he said, let's make man, he really was talking to himself. So this is why in verse 27 he says, so God made man in his own image. Well, how did he make man? He made man in the spirit of God through wisdom. Let's read it again. The spirit of, of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of in the fear of the Lord. So what are you saying? I'm saying in your God nature is wisdom, is might, is counsel, is understanding, is the reverence of God, is the mind of God. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And when you took on the mind of Christ, you really took on the mind of God because the mind of Christ was to be obedient to his Father, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. So when you stay in God, you're staying in Jesus. And when you're staying in Jesus, you're staying in the Holy Ghost. So these are the seven mindsets. And we must understand that seven makes the one. Seven is the number of completion. So God becomes complete in your life when you accept all that he is. If I ask my wife for a piece of cake and I'm eating cake, I'm not just eating cake. I am eating flour. I am eating salt or whatever is in cake. All the ingredients that's in cake. So so whatever is in the cake is also in the crumbs. So if there's milk in the cake, there's milk in the crumbs. So when you get an ounce of God, you get all of God. So when you stand in God, you're staying all in that God is. Seven. There are seven I am's. Jesus says the I am. He said before Moses was, I am. The problem with the English language is, how can you be something before something was? Before Moses was, not I was. No, before Moses was, I am. I am still the I am that I am. Uh-oh, you just seeing the I am in the flesh. I'm walking with you, and don't get it twisted because I'm thirsty. Don't get it twisted because I'm hungry. Don't get it twisted. 
twist this because you got me on this cross. Because I am still the I am. And when you bring up Moses, I'm going to bring up who I am before Moses was. Because I still is the I am before he was. Uh-oh, I'm still there. Uh-oh, I'm cause the I am cannot be moved. Woo! So Jesus gave us the seven I am's, which was really giving us the seven mindsets of God himself. Stand in God and stand in Jesus. Watch this. Watch this. So we understand. I am divine. He's naming a I am. He's naming one of the I am's. I am divine. And if you stay connected to me, you can bear fruit. But if you do not stay connected to me, I'll disconnect you. Because without me, you can do nothing. Without the I am's, you have no wisdom. You have no counsel. You have no might. You have no understanding. You have no fear of the Lord. You have no spirit of God. Because you're not in the I am. But when you're in the I am, you have intelligence. Why? Because you have wisdom. You have might. You have counsel. You have fear. You have the spirit of God. You have all those things that come with who? God. Woo! Guess what? And me, Jesus was saying me and God is one. When you have seen him, you've seen the Father. Watch this. So we have I am, the seven I am's. I want you to study. The seven I am's are tied to, let, when God says, so he created man in his own image. God created you in the seven I am's. Okay? Not only do we have seven I am's, we have the seven spirits of God, according to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. Watch this. Not only do we have that, but we have the seven spirits of God. Now let's go to Revelation. Oh God. I'm going to show you God. And I'm going to show you God through the whole Bible. Okay. Now watch this. Now a lot of people teach on and they'll say the book of Revelation is about end times. And the book of Revelation is about this. No, the book of Revelation is about Jesus. And when you talk about Jesus, you talk about God. The book of Revelation. Now, I didn't make this up, and I ain't trying to be deep. Okay, I'm going to read it to you. Let's go to the book of Revelation, the first chapter and the first verse and the first three words. So nobody won't deceive you again and make you think you're scared to read the book of Revelation. Woe unto those. No. Watch this. We're in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. Watch this. The revelation of Jesus Christ. That's the first four words. The book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Christ. Uh oh, but it seemed to talk about God because that's who he is. Uh oh, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things which must shortly come to pass. He gave this to John the Revelator. And John the Revelator wrote about Jesus Christ. The whole book of Revelation, it tells us from the first chapter to the first verse, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, gave unto John. And to show him unto his servant things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angels unto his servant John. Woo! Okay, now watch this. Let's move over. Uh... And matter of fact, let me see. Let me see. L l let me read it all, okay? We might have to do a part two tomorrow. Watch this. Watch this. Verse two. Who bear a record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was not a Bible. But in the beginning was the word. Why? Because Jesus is the word and the word was in the beginning. Uh-oh. Jesus was the word. What's the first word in the Bible? In the beginning, God. In the beginning, Jesus he was in his God form when he come in Jesus. He comes in humanity, but he still has divinity because he's all man and all God. Woo! So we bear record of the word of God, which was from the beginning. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory as the only begotten son. Not the begat, not the B-E-G-A, but the B-E-G-O. The B-E, the reason, Jesus Christ is the only begotten, because he's the only one that he is the son at the same time being the father. So he's the only begotten son. He's not the begat. You can't begat God, because God don't have no father to bring him into existence. He is Alpha and Omega. So I'm staying in God because there is no beginning before him. I don't care what any other book read. I don't care what any other person come along. We start with God because God is the only beginning and he has never began. Woo! Watch this. Okay. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Who bear record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and all things that he saw. Blessed is he that read and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Now, John to the seven churches. So we have 
seven I am's. We have seven uh, spirits of God, seven mindsets, and now we have seven churches. Okay, are you with me? Watch this. Now I, I don't, I, I don't want to go because I can be all day on this. So let me go to uh, Take your time, honey. verse twelve. And I turned to see the voice of the one that spake to me. John is seeing who God is, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. So I have seven. Here it is, seven I am's according to Luke chapter fifteen. Seven. I got. I got seven mindsets according to Isaiah. I got seven churches. There's also seven candlesticks. There's also seven angels, messenger for every church. Uh oh. There's seven stars. Uh oh. You see how the seven. Keeps going on because all of these sevens is a representation of the one God. But the one God is what? The revelation of Jesus Christ. When you stand in God, you're staying in Jesus. Oh, God. Watch it. So we got seven candlesticks. We got seven I, I, I am. We got seven mindset. We got seven stars. We got seven churches. And guess what? We got seven dispensations. So, in order when you know how to stay in God, now let me walk into you so you understand it. You got to know how to be in God and never leave his mindset that never leaves his church uh oh, that never leaves the dispensations, that never leave, come on, the candlesticks. In other words, you gotta know how to walk with God through every stage as God reveal who He is. Woo! Mm, seven rooms, seven floor house, there's seven rooms on each floor, there's seven rooms inside of each floor, and then there's seven floors. Woo! You gotta know how to walk through it. Study the Old Testament and how Moses would walk into the tabernacle and he would walk seven, seven pieces of furniture. He would take this piece of furniture, anoint this piece, and then take seven more steps because you seven. So how do you forgive your brother? Forgive your brother 70 times seven because 49 because it equals the completion of a total forgiveness. The one who had go God, I feel the whole the Holy Ghost now. Daniel had prayed and they held up for 21 days because you have your spirit, you have your soul, and you have your body. Well, three times seven is 21. They was trying to hold up the information that would have been downloaded in his spirit, in his soul, and in his body. So it was held up for 21 days. Woo! We got to understand that the enemy don't want you to know how to stay in God and walk through the levels. In my father's house are many mansions. You got to know how to walk through every mindset. I got to first start with the spirit of God. Then I have to know how to walk through wisdom. If I walk through wisdom, I walk through counsel. I walk through counsel, I walk through might. I walk through might, I walk through understanding. I walk through understanding, I walk through the fear of God. I got to walk through the seven I am. I got to know him as the bread. I got to know him as the vine. I got to know him as the door. I got to know him as the shepherd. I have to know him. So I have to stay in God to learn about God and I can't come out. Everything I need is in the seven. Woo! Jesus. Okay, watch this. I'm trying to get to my point. Okay, we have seven dispensations. I want to walk you through the seven dispensations. The first dispensation is called uh, innocent, the dispensation of innocent. Dispensation means space or time. It just means an age in which some, some system of thinking was coming. The first system of thinking was the dispensation of innocent. Adam and Eve did not know anything. They were innocent. Okay? That's the first dispensation. And then they fell out of that dispensation when they when they ate of the forbidden fruit. So then it was introduced to another way of consciousness. In other words, there were seven mindsets. The first mindsets, when you study Genesis chapter 1 to chapter 3, you're dealing with a mindset of innocent when it comes to people. So you have to be very careful how you compare yourself to Adam and Eve because you don't have an innocent concept. You have a concept of being a sinner. You need to be saved. They had a different mindset. So when you use that role in understanding God, you got to understand God's relationship to man when he was in a place of innocent. That's the first dispensation. The second dispensation was the dispensation of consciousness. Now the man come up with, and he has his own conscience so he can grow things. He, he, can, he can make fig leaves. He's using his own mind. He's 
no longer innocent because he had disobeyed God. That was another dispensation. You got to know how to walk with God and stay in God through all of your dispensations. If, even when you're innocent, you got to know how to walk with God. Well, when you mess up, you got to know how to walk with God. Every one of those places, God walk with you because you have to know how to stay in God as you develop. You go from place to place. You go from being a sheep. You move into being a servant. You move into being friends. You move into sonship. You move into being a bride. You got to know how to be the light. You got to know how to be the salt. You got to know how to be these things. You And you got to stay in God. Don't let the devil trick you out of your dispensation that now you are in a dispensation of being blessed. You don't pray no more. Now that you're in a dispensation that you got some knowledge, you don't, you don't lean on God anymore. You got to stay in God regardless of how many roles flows he walk you into, how many rooms he expose you to, how many levels he elevates you to, you got to still say, I will stay in God. Woo! First dispensation, innocent. Second, consciousness. Third, man gets authority over the earth. This is when judgment came because of the flood. And after the flood, men, now you have authority. And you'll see this. This is when governments come in and they begin to move the city and establish government. This is when you see the Tower of Baal being established in the 11th chapter of Genesis because government, now we are in that dispensation. You have to know, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. You got to know what dispensation you are in. You got to know what level that you are in. And you must know, I cannot come out of God. If I'm poor, I don't come out of God. If I'm rich, I don't come out of God. If I'm a if I'm a sheep, I don't come out of God. If I'm a shepherd, I don't come out of God. You gotta know how to stay in God, regardless of where your walk takes you. If you go from faith to faith, from glory to glory, in your elevation, you must stay in God. Why are you preaching this, Jesus? Because many people, while you used to stay in God, you don't stay in God anymore. Ever since you've been elevated, ever since you came to some knowledge, ever since you uh, you've been promoted, you no longer stay in. God, watch this, watch this. That's the third, men is in authority. F the fourth dispensation was men was on, under promises. This is when Abraham was introduced in the 12th chapter of Genesis and all of a sudden God is making promises and I'm going to give you this. And some of those promises was conditional and some of those promises was unconditional. That was the dispensation that was in. So we are still in Genesis now. You'll notice that Genesis, I've already talked about four different, four different dispensations or time zones already in one book. You got to know the shift in your life. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. You got to know when God is shifting you. And God is saying you got to get closer. God is saying I'm shifting you from one time zone to another. From one faith level to another. There was a time you could have faith for a thousand dollars. But you didn't have enough faith for a million dollars. I'm going to shift you. You got to stay in me. Now that you are able to operate from a million dollar platform. You still got to stay in me. Don't pray so hard in your thousand dollar platform. But now in your million dollar platform. You think you don't need prayer. You got to stay in God. God. One of the greatest things that's going to dece deceive God's people is blessings. Because when you get blessed, you no longer stay in the mind of God. You don't you don't seek God for His counsel, for His might, for His understanding, for His wisdom. You no longer have the fear of the Lord. You're bold. You're arrogant. You think you know it. You no longer trust in the Holy Ghost. You trust in your riches. I'm telling you, I don't care how many times God shifts you, how many times God elevates you. You must stay in God. Watch this. Promises. Abraham, that was a dispensation of promises. The fifth dispensation was law. Law came in too. And, and you get to deal with Moses making the laws and, and different things like that. And laws came and the Ten Commandments. And, and maybe one day I'll take my time and walk you through every one of those dispensations and how God talked to man. How his relationship was with man. You have to know the difference relationship between God and Adam versus God and Joseph. Or God and Moses. Or God and Abraham. Or God and Noah. All of those were different levels of dispensation or different levels of commitment. Different levels of insight. There's a different level of insight. When you have a baby and she's three years old, you say, this is my little girl. As she get older, you'll say, this is my daughter. As she get older, you may say something else. The language changes as she shifts from one dispensation, but she still got to stay connected to mama's love. 
Oh, you got to understand that we cannot leave God and we got to understand all of it. Now, I'm really preaching in cold today because people have tried to infiltrate Jesus and you think that you are in God when you don't, don't understand who Jesus is. When you don't understand who Jesus is, you just now lost your true understanding of who God is. And when you don't understand who God is, you really don't understand who Jesus is because it must be revealed. Uh-oh. So God said, I will now. So God now created man in his own image. It is from that oneness of the seven ingredients or the seven mindsets that you understand the totality of who God is. Woo! Okay? Now, I'm telling you so much. I'm telling you so much. I watch people who get on TV and say, give it on to God, but then they'll say, but I, I, I don't believe in, uh, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe in Jesus. Uh-oh. Problem. I got a problem there. Because you have to understand the oneness of who they are. You have to understand the oneness. Watch this. Fifth dispensation. Man under law. Sixth dispensation. Man under grace. This is where we are. Technically, biblically, we are under the dispensation of grace. Okay? Grace. So we're saved. He said, for by, for by Moses came the law, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Who did he say? I am the way. One of the I am's is I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. That is the I am. Who did God introduce himself to Moses? Who should I say sent me? I am that I am. That I, that I am. So when you understand the I am, you understand God. And when you understand the I am of God, you understand the I am of Jesus. So when Jesus says I am the way, they understood something here. Woo! Are you saying you are the I am? Yes, I am. Yes, I am that I am. We must understand this. See? So we are under the dispensation of grace. And this is when the, the, the dispensation of, of the mystery of the church was revealed under grace. We're saved. Watch this. We're saved by grace through faith. Grace is a representation of Noah. Noah spent time with God. And he looked in the eyes of God and he found grace. He looked in the eyes of God who is the I am. And Jesus came as the I am. So you're saved. Jesus Christ bring redemption. But he says I bring it by grace through faith. I really bring it by Noah through Abraham. Because Noah found grace and Abraham is a symbolic of faith. So through Noah and Abraham, I can be saved. The first salvation came through uh, uh, Noah's ark was symbolic of salvation. Real salvation started out as a place and when you came into the boat, you were saved. It was a place. So Jesus says if any man be in Christ, that's a place and the place is in Jesus. Jesus is the place where salvation is. He is the I am and when you are in the I am, you are saved. Uh oh, you are say because you are in the I am. Who is the I am? I am I am God because I am that I am. All these take me to a safe place in God. Woo! Are you hearing me? And I must stay in God. I must stay in my understanding of who God is. I must stay in my understanding of that God is wisdom and that God is might and God is counsel and God is fear. I must understand the seven mindsets. I must understand the seven churches. I must understand the seven candlesticks. I must understand the seven anointings. I must understand the seven. I must understand those. Woo! God, I'm walking heavy today. And the last dispensation is the dispensation that we talked about the personal reign with Christ. When he comes to rapture us up. And that's the seven dispensations. Okay. Now I want to move somewhere. I got 14 minutes. I want to go back and I want to walk you through. And if the Lord say the same. We're going to try to walk you through all of this. Yes God is good. <laughs> and if you, would say, if you would say to God. God you're so good. He would say yes I am. Mm. Yes I am. He's referring to something. Remember, remember when I taught. And I got to go back to it. I taught about the Lord's Prayer. And I said that the Lord's Prayer should not be recited. It should be walked out. And when you say our Father. You should stop with our. And know why he including a, 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 uni, a unity in prayer. You must know that. That's the same thing with the seven I am's. They are not just to be said. They are to be walked out. So when he says I am divine. You must know who is the I am that he's talking about. You must understand that the I am of the vine. Represents the seven I am. It represents the seven candlesticks. It represents the seven dispensations. It represents the seven minds of God in Isaiah. It represents in God created man in his own image. All of that is in the I am. So if you, I am the vine and you are the branches and you stay in me, you can bear fruit because you connect it to what? Wisdom, might, 
counsel, fear, understanding. You connect, you connect it with seven anointing, seven candlesticks. You're, you're connected to seven angels, messengers, mindsets of God. You're connecting to God himself. You're connected to the word. You're connected to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long seven kind. Quit telling me you don't have enough. You can't do enough. You're not smart enough. You must don't know you, that you are in the vine. In the vine, I have what I need. I have the wisdom that I need, the counsel that I need, the, 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 the courage that I need, the power to become the sons of God is in the I am. And I can bear more fruit, much fruit, and great fruit because I'm connected to the I am. And my father is the husband man. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. So let me go back to the first seven I am. The first seven I am I'm going to deal with is he said, I am the bread of life. When you understand that I'm staying in God, I'm staying in my bread. I'm staying in truth. Bread is symbolic of truth. So when I stand in God, I'm, I'm staying in the seven I am's. The first seven I am is that I am bread. So I understand that God is the truth that I need. He satisfies my hunger because I am in the I am. And the I am is the bread of life. Woo, Jesus. So Jesus at the table, he had communion, he had a loaf of bread, he takes a piece and he breaks it and gives everybody a piece of the loaf. We all have a piece of the truth. We got to come together and know what the loaf looks like because we have to know what the bread of life looks like. It makes us unify because all of us have a piece of the truth. But we have to come together and eat that bread. And unless you eat of my body and drink of my blood, you're not worthy to be in the kingdom. You must partake of the I am. There are so many people who are not and, and let me say this again, you're not partaking, you're not digesting God, you're not gurgitating the word, you're not letting the, the bread come in and go through your system, you're not eating enough of the bread, you got to eat the whole roll, you can't eat half of it, you got to eat all of it, that's the I am, so the devil is trying to mess with the bread of the word, he's trying to mess with the understanding of the scriptures, because he don't want you to know the bread of life, and if you don't partake of the bread, then you won't be able to stay in God, because it's the bread that keeps you uh oh connected to God when you have God on the inside of you then you can sustain because he becomes your life Woo! I am the bread of life <laughs> Jesus fed 5,000 he took two fishes and five loaves of bread and multiplied when you understand the bread of life you understand multiplication because bread can be multiplied Woo! bread swells bread grows it extends <laughs> Okay, very key. So the first I am is I am the bread of life. Jesus declared I'm the bread of life. And who that comes to me, watch this. He who comes to me, John 6, 35, shall never go hungry. And he that believes in me shall never be thirsty. Because I am the bread of life. Uh-oh. Now watch this. When you are partaking of the I am, and, and, and let me say it like this so we can have clarity. When you are partaking of the I am, Father, give them clarity of what I'm saying. Lighten the load until they can digest it and then increase it. Because I want you to get this in your spirit. The enemy doesn't want you to partake the knowing that the I am is the bread. In other words, whenever you spend time with God, you're spending time with bread. See, now watch what Jesus says. If you partake of this bread, you'll never be hungry again. It satisfies, it brings a fulfillment in you. People are leaving God because they're not fulfilled. They're not fulfilled because they're not understanding that who in you is bread. What's in you is bread. Who in you is bread. What's in you is bread. Who in, who in you is, 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 is the way. Who, who in you is the life. Who in you is the truth. Truth is not a statement, it's a person. And you're partaking of the I am. And when you stay in God, you stay in bread. What do you do when you stay in bread? You stay in truth. You stay in truth. People are leaving truth because you're leaving God's bread. Because you don't understand who God is. You think God is just a concept, a name, something somebody told you in church. No, you must really eat of his bread. That's the reason why we have communion. Do this often as you will in remembrance from me. Woo! Partaking of my body, partaking of my blood that I laid down. It brings atonement. It brings me into one with God. We don't have enough bread people in the house of God. We like candy and jelly beans, but bread will make you move. Bread will say, I'm not going to sit under some false doctrine. When you eat the bread of God, I don't need entertainment. I don't need somebody to please me because I've been eating bread. Woo! It's part of the I am. It's part of God. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Watch this. I wrote some things down. It refers to Exodus when God bring matter out of heaven. And they said, what is this? He brought matter out of heaven. 
it is symbolic of the truth. Uh, uh, the devil tried to tempt Jesus and said, turn the stones into bread. He said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The word is the bread of God that proceeds out of the mouth of God that sustains me even in the physical. So even when I am in temptation, because I have bread, because I know truth, I don't fall to the devil's trap. Why? Because I'm eating healthy. When I eat healthy from the I am, I partake with the I am. And from the I am, it sustains me from less. It sustains me from drifting. It sustains me from crazy philosophies. Why? Because I know who God is. I know who the I am is in me. Woo! The bread of life. Okay? Watch this. Watch this. He says, you'll never hunger again. It is, it is a satisfaction. Now, this is so important, and I'm going to stop right here because I want to take my time and teach this. It is a satisfaction because too many of us Still have hunger for the wrong thing. You're not eating bread. Listen. The, the attractions of the world. Doesn't win when you eat bread. And can I be honest with you? It's, it's, it's really the flesh of Christ. Unless you eat of my flesh. Unless you drink of my blood. They thought he was talking about cannibalism. The 6-6 six, six of the Bible. The 6-6-6 six, six, six of the Bible is John chapter 6 verse 66 and it says and they followed him no more why did they stop following Christ in the 666 of the Bible because he said unless you eat of my flesh unless you partake of the I am unless you stay connected to God how do, you, how do you stay connected by keeping God in you greater is he that is in you than he is in the world I must eat and breathe God People are falling away because you're not eating and breathing God anymore. He's not your appetite. He's not your desire. That's how you're not staying in God. Because you're not staying in the I am. There's no way in the world you stand in the way, in the truth, in the life, in the door. You stand in the vine. You stand in all the I am's and you come out of God. No way possible. When you are drifting from God, you have drifted someplace away from those seven I am's. You've drifted somewhere away from those seven candlesticks, those seven places of illumination. You've moved somewhere away from God's wisdom, God's might, God's counsel, God's understanding in Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1. You've moved somewhere away from God. And I'm telling you, and I'm really beseeching you, my brother, I'm begging you, my brother, stay in God. Stay in truth. Stay in the way. Stay in the door. Stay with the shepherd. I am the shepherd of the sheep. That's another I am. I am the shepherd of the sheep. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the, I am the bread. See, all of those I am's. And if I don't stay in those, I don't need the world to entertain me. I don't need other things outside of life. What I have is in the I am. It is in, that is where I get my identity. That's where I get my appetite, my drive. It is from that. And people are leaving God. They're leaving the I am. And now they are finding themselves on their own. And they're hungry for other things outside of God because you have changed your appetite. Woo! I feel God in this place. Watch this. Okay. I am the bread. The next, next one. And let me see, I got four minutes. The next I am is I am the light of the world. The seven I am. Staying in God is staying in the seven I am's. It is staying in the I am. I am led by the Spirit. That's the I am because God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost is really one God. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One. It is staying in that. How do, how do you, you say, how did I get lost? How did I, why am I not growing? Are you growing? Are you eating this bread? Do you understand he's the light of the world? Are you fooled by the other lights that look like real lights? Are you being controlled by the enemy, uh, changing himself into an angel light, and you're being deceived? You must know who the real light of the world is. You must know where the real way is, what the real truth is. You can't play with this. I've been saying this over and over again. God, I feel the anointing. Too many people are playing with God. You're not serious about your I am's. You're not serious about the mindset of God. You're not serious. You want to make a deal with God. But you don't want to partake. Listen, the more you uh, fall in love with God, the less time you have for yourself. 
what God is calling me to, a greater level of prayer, a greater level. That means there are a lot of things in life I won't be able to do as much. I won't be able to go as fishing as much. I won't be able to, to play games as much. I won't be able to watch TV as much. I watch very little now. I won't be able to do a lot of things. Why? Because the I am is calling me to a greater place, a greater dispensation, which means I got to come to understand him at a different level. You can't still want all of your time for your life and think you're going to grow. You're not staying in God. Staying in God pulls you away. You come out from among them. You stop. Your language comes out. Your, 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 your uh, familiar, you leave your familiar. You go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. You move in all of those levels. You start walking in the rooms of God. You see different pieces of furniture. You have a greater understanding. There's a deeper level. You go down and you go up. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. See? See, this is how, and you stay in God because the more you walk into the I am, you ain't going to keep smoking when you just, you just walked in that I am, the I am the bread, I am the light, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the door, I am the shepherd. You can't remain the same eating all of these I am's. You can't remain the same when you're sitting under the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of truth, the spirit of, of fear, the spirit of understanding. You can't stay the same. See? Real talk. Why? What's going to happen? The more you understand that I am, the more you understand the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Woo! I want to come to know you. Paul said, I want to come to know you. In the fellowship of your suffering and the power of your resurrection. I want to come to know you in a deeper level. I want to stay in God. And how do I stay in God? I must stay connected to the vine. What is the vine? It is one of the I am's. And it's really all of the I am's. Because the ounce of God is all of God. So you must stay in the I am. And when you connect to the vine, you can be fruitful. You can't be fruitful in your marriage, on your home, in your community, at your church, when you're disconnected from the vine. Matter of fact, God is going to judge you. And if you're not bearing fruit, he's going to purge you. Those who are bearing fruit, he's going to purge you. Those are not, he's going to disconnect you from the branch because you're not, you're not connected. You're not allowing the sap to go through the Holy Spirit to go through to cause you to be fruitful. To be in God is not just to say I'm saved and sanctified. It's not to say I'm just a Christian. It's not to say that's the church I go to or there's my pastor. Oh yeah, my pastor can preach. No, being saved is about being fruitful. We're going to walk through the whole chapter of John 15. It's about maturing from much fruit to more fruit to great fruit. You got to take this thing serious. You must stay in the vine. You must understand the stem of Jesse. And there's a root that comes out of the stem of Jesse. You must stay connected. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You must stay connected to that God. Woo! I'm warning you, the devil is trying to pull you away from the vine. And you'll never have your right mind out the vine. Without me, you can do nothing. You'll never get fulfillment. He can't do it. I don't care how nice he looks. He can't do it. She can't do it. Only the bread can give you to the point you hunger no more. Only the water of God, the I am, until you're not thirsty any longer. Woo! One verse says, you'll never hunger and thirst again. And another verse says, if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you shall be filled. So how do I take the bread and never be hungry when I need to hunger and thirst for righteousness? Because there's a different level, there's a different mindset for the hunger for righteousness versus being hungry. Uh-oh! See, there's levels that God want to speak to you from, but you got to stay in God. you got to walk. I can't tell you, I want you to come over and see my house. And when you come in the door, you go a shouting and you start speaking in tongues. You say, what a wonderful house. And you ain't went past the door. You got to walk past the door. And every room has a different set of furniture. There are many rooms in your life. In my father's house are many mansions. Have you ever seen mansions in a house? I know you see, I know you can imagine houses in a mansion. But can you, can you imagine mansions in the house? Which means that there are spiritual places in the house of God that are larger than the title of the house itself. Okay? God, I'm walking heavy. Last one. I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. I bring exposure. I cause things to be seen.
I am the light of the world. I bring the illumination. I am the real truth. Let there be light. What was light in Genesis chapter uh, 1 that was not light in, uh, uh, well, in day 1 that was different from the light from day 4? In day 4, he created the sun and the moon. And he said, let the sun be for the greater light and the moon be for the lesser light. Well, why would he need to create the sun and the moon in day 4 when he already said, let there be light in day 1? Because there's seven days. Because there are seven dispensations. Because there are seven candlesticks. Because there are seven churches. Because there are seven I am's. Because there are seven spirits of God. You have to understand each one of those days. So when he said, this is the day that the Lord has made, which day are you talking about? And when he says, you walk, you work while it's day, for at night no man can work, you must work in the light. Because the day is the light. Because when he called the day, he said, let there be light. And he called the light day. So when he says, you are the light of the world, you are the day of the world. There's a day in which you release. I told you this is going to be heavy. You must understand God want to walk you through his days and he want to be able to do something. In each one of those days, he released something. In the first day, he released light. You got to know in the second day, he released firmaments. And you have to know each one of those days. So when Adam is born and he's created, then he already have days that was in order for him. You got to understand that. John said, I was in the outer patness, but I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Which day is that? That's not Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's another day. That's another candlestick. That's another I am. That's another mystery. That's another room. And you got to stay in God. The things he wants to show you, you got to stay in God to, to see these things. The things he wants to reveal to you and how he wants to use you is only going to happen if you stay in the I am. I'm going to produce some fruit people have not seen. Woo! God. Because there are many layers to God. There are many understandings of God. Okay? So, Father, I thank you for this revelatory word. I thank you, Lord. We thank you for the clarity. That we thank you for the Holy Spirit that will lead us and guide us to all truth. Lord, we repent when we felt the pull to come out of you. To not understand you. To not walk in that level. Some of us have, was afraid to go into the next room. We were afraid to examine the furniture. We was afraid what we were going to hear and what we were going to see. God, make us understand that you are the light of the world. You are the I am. You are the bread. You are the water. You are the way. And let us learn to follow you into this path, into this journey. You are the Alpha and the Omega. Oh, God, you establish these dispensation and you will never leave us nor forsake us. Teach us how to understand at the level that we're at. When the room that we're at, don't let us move into it prematurely and don't let us leave it too fast. In the name of Jesus, let us understand who you are. Give us power to stay when all worlds are pulling on us. When ego is pulling on us, when the flesh is pulling on us, let us stay in you. I feel this in my spirit. I want you to hear this if you heard nothing else. God is saying, stay here. I'm trying to tell you something. Stay here. And sometimes bills will pull you out. Distractions pull you out. Sometimes another thought, another voice pull you out. You got to stay in that place in God. You got to stay in the I am's. Because without this revelatory of this place... You can do nothing. I am the vine. You are the branches. My father man is the husband man. Without me, you can do nothing. Don't be deceived as if you can have life outside of the vine. I put up a post. I said we must learn to stay in the vine and draw from the vein. The blood of God. This is where a believer lives. We don't have the anointing that we need to bring this earth into the place that God wants us to because we there are not enough people who have stayed in God to get the mysteries. We don't have the anointing. The presence of God is not even on it. I hate to say that the average preacher that I hear, I don't hear the presence of God on their life because they, they have not been standing in God. You can't straddle the fence. Either you love one or hate the other. Man who loses life shall find it. You got to let it all go. You got to let it all go. You got to empty out. That's the only way you're going to stay in God. Paul said, I counted all is done. That's the only way you're going to stay in God. For him, in him I live and move and have my being. That's the only way I'm going to stay for God. You got to hate mother, father, brother, and sisters. Uh, that's the only way you're going to be able to stay in God. That's the only way. A man who laid out his life shall find it. That's the only way you're going to be able to stay in God. Woo! You got to eat of his bread. Drink of his water. Walk through his doors. Know that he's the shepherd of your soul. 
Know that he has the counsel in the might. It's only way you're going to stand God. Because you were created by him. So God created man in his own image. What image did he create you? He created you in the I am. So if any man be in Christ, not when, if. If you are positioned in Christ, in Christ, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. In is spelled I in. The I of God must be in you. I in. In. It is a, it is a preposition. You must be in. You must stay in God. Paul said, I was fully persuaded that nothing shall separate me from the love of God. No height, nor death, no principalities, no powers, no things to come. Because I understand. Woo! It's this call that God has on our life is about staying in the I am of God. I love you. God bless you. If the Lord say the same, we'll do a part two tomorrow. I don't know what God is doing. I feel like I'm being sporadic now because I'm following God. Usually I just do a series. But again, staying in God is following God. Walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So I have to stay in God. I have to flow where the wind is blowing. Woo! So Father, we thank you. We bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Whatever God say the same, we'll see you tomorrow. Though We will see you tomorrow at 530. Have a wonderful evening. And remember, life is about living in the vine. I am the vine, you are the branches. Quit trying to produce fruit out of your flesh. When you do something out of your flesh, that's called works. When you do something by the Holy Ghost, that's called fruits. So the works of the flesh are these, but the fruit of the Spirit is these. Love you, God bless you, and have a wonderful night.